Good evening, I'm Zawaganat. Welcome to the studio. I shouldn't be doing that. Why are you doing that? There you go. Slightly bad connection, I suspect. Right, well, on tonight. Grass, grass, and more grass. So I'm afraid it's not a yeah. That's not very good. Actually, if I just turn that up, that will help. I am just looking for something which can... that might work. I need something just to hold that a little bit further forward. Now we'll try the eraser. So... Yeah. No, that won't work. Captain tape is too thick. That might work. Screwdriver box. It sort of works, <laughs> but it's not really working because it's not tall enough. Oh well. Back to plan A. I'll put a watercolour box underneath. Um, what am I doing here is literally just trying to... bring that further forward slightly because it's easier than to do the um, grass. And that's what I'm doing. Lots of grass. So, in fact, I kind of want this at an angle. So I'm trying to do these this grass around here slightly smaller. Because it's further away. Not much, but it is some. Now in practice on this side of this hut, the soil. <laughs> there's no uh, there's no grass there. But we're using artist license. Change whatever I feel like, basically. And if I feel like there should be grass on this side, there's grass on this side. So this is kind of a bit like pointillism, but with little short lines as opposed to dots.
Now one thing I perhaps should have done here maybe is to put an underlying dark or at least some kind of underlying colour but a bit late for that now. I could perhaps put one over the top but I probably won't bother at all. These are uh, random, as much as I can make it random. They're not uh, in rows or lines or anything. Kind of want you to do that because I want to bring that back down to here and then that way I've got the grass that's behind in first. So I want to take this across and go up because whilst you might not notice it it sort of tends to make look this bit of grass that grass look in front of this bit of grass which clearly it wouldn't do if i go across and so i'm going to sort of now go up here now i only did so far down i didn't do you know, I sort of did a, a wavy edge on the brickwork as well because the soil around here is not especially flat. So the only thing I've got to do is make sure that this grass goes up over the edge. And uh, so it hides the edge of the uh, coloured brickwork that I've done. Yeah, sometimes if grass has been cut with something like a strimmer, then you might get an even, you know, fairly uniform cut. Otherwise, um, you know, the grass blades are all over the place. Now down near this end, I'm doing a very slight slicing motion. Uh, just to elongate the grass a little bit. As I move further that way I'll start to just uh, dot it down and, and slice less. some reason tonight. The uh, the vapour given off by this is bothering my eyes. Now I was going to originally uh, put green ink over the top of this grass. However Lady Zara has requested that I don't do that. This is our shed. It's our picture for me or for us so that's what the customer is asking for is not green so <laughs> not getting green <laughs>
Okay, we've got the line there. That's all that I need. And uh, now I can just basically continue wherever I feel like it. I'm using slight slicing motions just to in elongate the grass. I'm also rocking the pen from side to side and what that means in terms of this is again a stroke like that, a stroke like that and anywhere in between. And it just makes the things not look really regular, re reg regimented like soldiers. Um, they're actually sort of you know, fairly random as you might expect grass to be. Kind of the main advantage is, is it does fill in the space and tends to help stop the uh, thing where the tool drops into an already burnt slot and then adds more heat and uh, makes it darker. Some of these dark spots are just literally that. They, the blade has dropped into an existing groove which has been created and sort of su uh, superheats it and makes it go darker. I'm just working my way down to the uh, the bottom of the board here. It just seems like a, a reasonable goal. I mean, after all, anyway, um, you can do this any way you like. There we go. Um, what I'm going to do now is join this to the right hand side just because
and then we are joined and now just for the fun of it I am just going to extend this a little bit make it a bit longer and then just carry on So grass can be one of the most boring bits of things to do. Although there is some sort of, I don't know, some sort of satisfaction to filling an area in. And when you're doing this sort of thing, you do tend to kind of play the game of, oh, I'll just go down to there and just fill in this square um, and stuff like that, just to give yourself artificial milestones, really. Um, yeah, so finish that bit and... Altogether sort of makes it easier to pass the time, really, in there. Doing something like this. Well, if you're concentrating particularly hard, then you probably don't really notice the passage of time anyway. interesting thing is this pen is running effectively running quite cool but it actually feels quite hot I mean, it's running at three on a scale of sort of one to ten so it doesn't go up to eleven doesn't this machine um, and uh, this is at three so we're kind of I was going to say thirty percent it's actually slightly more than that well and not even 33, slightly more than that, just because it goes from 1 to 10, not 0 to 10. So there's only 9 intervals. So you get mass as well. Um, so it's 3 nines. Rather than 3 tens. <laughs> So the fact that I am running this pen quite cool is surprising the way it's quite warm, the body's quite warm. But that does happen with these smaller with these smaller pens. The air holes are there to let air out air out and you can sometimes feel the heat there, but not very often. But it's kind of let's say it's like a convection. With the larger pens, whilst there is a heat releasing slot there. Air gets drawn in there and tends to come out the top here. Uh, there's like vents just around where the uh, this cable connector is, and um, it tends to come all the way up the pen. And the pen body doesn't seem to get as hot. It's also a wider pen body, and uh, potentially I guess a bit thicker. But one of the reasons why I prefer using the thicker pens to the thinner pens. Of course, I didn't know that when I started. And so I think I chose a kit that had this particular pen in it. Uh, or I might, no, I think I bought this one as extra. Um, and I bought the thin version, which now I know I would have preferred to get the less thin version, the heavy duty version.
It's kind of important to remember which way is up as well. Daft as it sounds, especially when you tilt the board slightly as I'm doing here, you know, that you, you're getting vertical. Because if you start to sort of slant over too much, then the grass kind of looks not the same. And I'm trying, not that I've ever done a lot of grass before, I've done animal fur before. I'm kind of thinking, what happens if I do sort of slant it? What does it look like it's been stood on? Or would that sort of... Excuse me. Tend to emphasise the, the ground shape. Not something to practice on here, but... Um, I'll maybe think about that. See if I can sort of telegraph ground shape just by the angle of the grass perhaps well I seem to have overnight by the way completely changed the subject but it was whilst I was thinking about it then uh, fixed a long-standing problem I've kind of had with my PC although whether it will continue to be a problem I'm not sure um, every night I back up my PC. Seems like a good idea. I've had plenty fail where, um, uh, where I used to look after them at work, so you know, backups when people didn't do them were kind of annoying as they always wanted you to try and recover the data off the disk. Uh, even if it was a disk failure or maybe you need to reinstall the operating system oh but there's all my data on the disk where they shouldn't have put it anyway but they did this was in the past and uh, so I'm kind of also paranoid I am conscious of needing to do backups so all the household PCs back up to a Windows server at the moment that I've got here a Windows home server and one of the things about my particular PC here is it starts up to do the backup successfully and indeed does the backup but then doesn't go back to sleep uh, idle timeouts are set and everything else is set um, in order to for the thing to go back to sleep but it never does I, you know, I generally come down first thing in the morning and the PC is spinning In fact, one of the things I, I did was um, reduce the hours of backup and push them later to, towards 8 o'clock in the morning, just because that's the time when I come down. And uh, then the PC hasn't been running for several hours, uh, just sat there idling because it didn't go back to sleep. I never have been able to get it to go to sleep. Quite what's stopping it, I don't know. And in fact, generally speaking, it doesn't doesn't go to sleep you know, at any time. It will occasionally, which is kind of frustrating to work out why it occasionally will. But that, you know, if I explicitly tell it to go to sleep, it straight away, bang, it's off. But time out to go to sleep never seems to work. Except when it does. <laughs> um, But, uh, you know, it, it's kind of annoyed me. I always had to come in here, make sure I come in here first thing or every day to uh, to turn off the PC. And, yeah, I've tried all sorts of things to try and let it go to sleep. Not knowing what it is that's stopping it makes it that a bit difficult, but tried all sorts of things. Uh, and so I was kind of thinking the other night for some obscure... Oh yeah, I know why, because of the the backups. Because I'm changing the backup system. Uh, and the backup system does... will run scripts before and after. So I was thinking about um, setting up... It, but it won't... Yeah. It runs scripts before and afterwards, but it won't actually wake up the PC if it's asleep. Or hibernating and 
So what I was looking to, so what crossed my mind was I could actually use the task schedule to wake up the PC. Uh, and explicitly then tell it to do a backup. And as well as I was sort of playing with that and thought, I eventually realised that kind of doesn't achieve what I want because he doesn't know. I don't know at this point in time when I want to do incremental backups, when I want to do full backups as such, the server system will say, hey, I've not had enough incrementals or it's been too long since I had a full backup. Do one. And I don't have to you know, configure that on any machine. I don't have to sort of put uh, scripts in place that go, oh, is it, is it a Wednesday and did I last do it and all this sort of thing in order to get it to uh, to make a decision. And unfortunately, when I uh, initiate a backup from the local machine, you have to tell it what you want it to do, which is kind of understandable when you want to just fire one off. But when you sort of want to uh, do a scheduled backup, I kind of still wanted the server to tell me what to do. One of the nice things about the um, this system is essentially the server will talk to the client um, or advertise itself to the client every every minute so it can it essentially can start a backup about a minute after the uh, the PC wakes up in the middle of the night assuming it's ready to do one and if it's not then it'll just go back to sleep and do one the next time the PC is on but um, one of the things I was playing with in in addition to that was how to put the PC back to sleep afterwards. It would have been nice after the job runs to uh, to go. You know what? You were asleep. Go back to sleep. And it turns out it's harder than it looks for Windows 10, especially because there really well, there kind of really isn't. Um, a, a user command except from the menu to tell the PC to go to sleep and so uh, to use that you'd actually sort of have to somehow script clicking on the button s navigating to the right option and then uh, selecting it so that it goes ahead just like it click it with a mouse and as are lots of solutions, a few that kind of amuse me. You know, the reason it won't go, Windows 10 won't go to sleep, well, sort of the reason is when you ask it to do that from a from the traditional method of running a DLL, um, it doesn't go to sleep. It, it hibernates, turns the power off completely, which means then it won't wake up again uh, for a backup or anything like that. You've got to push the power button, wait while it boots, and then it resumes from Hibernate, so it sort of carries on from where it left off, but with a long delay. Now, if you turn the Hibernate off, it will go to sleep. Starts up very quickly then, using all the normal sort of triggers. You know, for most people, touching the keyboard or moving the mouse. For me, they're turned off. Um, but uh, the thing about you know, so thing about turning the Hibernate off and, and what people often have been doing is turning the Hibernate off, put the PC to sleep, and then immediately turning it back on. It's kind of like, why bother? That all that does is allow you as a user the next time to choose to Hibernate the PC if you want, because it's still on the menu. If you disable it, it disappears from the menu. But it's kind of like. Um, in doing that, what you doing that method, although you've put your PC to sleep, if you turn the power off, you, it reboots. If you allow hibernation, the PC, uh, modern PCs like Windows 10, create, uh, actually sort of do a, a partial hibernate every time you ask it to go to sleep. It does a partial hibernate in that it writes out all the data to the disk and then it goes to sleep 
and it does that because then if the power fails and once the power's back you restart it the machine just carries on where it left off uh, by pulling the data from the disk in, instead of from the memory which is where it stored it before when it's asleep it stores the stuff in memory but that wouldn't work if you've turned you know, if you run these command scripts and turn off hibernate because you've turned off the hibernate wherever it is and I don't like that particular idea myself not that we lose power very often though I did this afternoon but you can guarantee that the one time uh, it happens is when you are just sleeping a PC and you want the data that was being worked on and it's tough it's gone uh, what I eventually found was uh, a Microsoft application which you can actually use to tell the PC to go to sleep and it actually does go to sleep the hybrid sleep so it does all the hybrid stuff and um, the hibernate stuff and then sleeps and this morning I ran that on the um, task scheduler for the first time and it worked the PC went to sleep came in tonight push the power button up it comes exactly where I left it off last night when I put it to sleep and it woke up in the middle of the night to do the backup and then went back to sleep so hence I've been able to solve a problem that I've had for years because Windows 10 has been out quite some time now two years and I'm rather kind of pleased about the fact that I can now you know, I now don't need to come into the studio to turn the PC off <laughs> it's um, kind of amazing how long you know, over the years literally years I've got used to doing that in fact if I ever walked in the studio and I didn't hear the PC and it's quiet anyway um, I'd know it rebooted because when it rebooted before I log on it will go to sleep <laughs> idle timeout kind of weird way it won't do it when you're logged in but uh, I now have a solution Well, I have a workaround, not a solution. Now when you get down to the edge here remember to keep doing smaller pieces of grass if you like because the grass doesn't sort of stop there <laughs> um, it keeps going down so you kind of need to do extra bits just short little pieces on the end uh, just so that you it looks like it's the top of the grass blades below
cup of tea. It's getting a little bit warm here. May have to go move the fan, but we'll see if I can avoid doing that. Where is it? Eight o'clock already. So time goes quite quickly when you're uh, paragraphing grass, which I suppose is a good thing. It would be terrible if this felt like absolutely hours and hours and hours, which of course is sort of what it is. I'm going to get a fan. It is getting a little bit warm here and I don't have a headband on. There we go, hopefully that will keep things a little bit cooler. The grass there just looked a little bit ill. Keep going these odd sort of direction shapes like this, um, stopping short and things, because it, it makes a more random pattern than doing just straight lines across. If you do that, you're then going to be really careful to make sure you don't start creating pattern uh, line patterns. And uh, if you if you sort of do these sort of slight random shapes type things, and although you may get some lines, they sort of go in all sorts of directions. So it doesn't look like a sort of a colouring in line. It sort of maybe looks like uh, you know a texture line, something that's in the ground or in the case of grass here, um, or if whatever you were doing something else. 
you know, it's, it's part of the thing as opposed to being uh, it's there because you didn't take much care when colouring it in. Now there's a bit of border around here which is just a little bit more reluctant to change colour. So I'm just being a little bit slower. And we'll get there eventually. This kind of reminds me of an audio plot and oscilloscope sometimes away. You get these sort of lines. Right, so unfortunately, this is you know this is one of the this this sort of detail takes time. It's quite a um, well time-consuming bit of taking time, doing lots and lots and lots of single lines. But you know, it's my opinion. I think it looks better by doing this. Uh, the um, same as when I'm doing the cats, and I actually do sort of fur which is not done this it's done similar to this but not with this particular tool and um, I think that looks better than just sort of grey in this in you know one one sort of smooth colour this kind of looks like grass and uh, yeah brown grass I suppose <laughs> yeah I probably wanted a good water at some point um, but uh, I think because it actually sort of looks like grass, you immediately recognise it as grass as opposed to dirt or <coughs> anything else. I think it makes the picture look better. I mean, I suppose the shed could be on dirt, which would sort of be a, a sort of a patchy, uniformy sort of colour. Um, but I kind of think this looks actually, you know, better. But time consuming. Uh, yeah, it's it's not it's what not one of the most exciting parts about doing the a pyrographic image is is sort of things like this. And as I say, when I'm doing the cats, this is um, it's a similar technique, but I use a different tool because I don't want as fine lines usually, and I don't want as much surface texture because this is actually cutting into the wood. But if I use the same tool as I used uh, doing the cat fur, then the grass blades would look too thick. With a with a uh, with a cat or with hair in general, it isn't the individual strands that you see very often. It's sort of the variations between you know this like colour in sort of fairly long sweeping. Um, strands or you know, groups of strands and things same with cats you sort of think you're seeing the individual strands but you're not you're seeing sort of groups of them and the way the light plays off them to some extent it's the same with grass but they're shorter um, 
when you sort of look out, you can almost see the grass, um, individual grass leaves, and, and you know even at quite a distance you can. So this works because of that. The the technique of the the cat's fur, the grass isn't long enough to sort of clump together and see the clumps. Fortunately, there's no um, massive. There is a technique to this, but there's no sort of massive um, high-end skills uh, to to doing this. The skills are sort of keeping it fairly random, making sure that you don't do lines and, and sort of end up with them all starting and stopping in the same place, because it becomes highly visible that when you've done that, and uh, also then so the the, the sort of skill of, of keeping it, it short keeping them um, quite distinguished and sort of visible but filling it in you know keeping the color going keeping the same sort of general overall color I mean I am getting some places where they're going quite dark because I'm going over a particular grass blade multiple times I shouldn't be, but I but I have been, and because uh, the knife just kind of slips, like many knives, they kind of slip into the groove that the groove that they've already just cut. If you're anywhere sort of close to it, now um, I'm guessing. Well, if you ride on the edge, then yes, it might slip in, but otherwise, I guess it's just human placement. You almost tend to put it into the same place. That's kind of one reason why I am rotating. You may or may not be able to see it, but I am rotating this tool left to right as I uh, as I as I do this. And that tends to help stop it dropping into the same groove. You're right, went to that bit of wood where the colour is a little bit more harder to get. So it's just slowing down slightly, or a bit. Just to apply a bit more heat. I've got a line there. I just need to break it up. So you still get lines, you know, e even with experience. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting lines. But the similar, the experience has shown me how to break up those lines. So today I got a new today yesterday. Yesterday was Sunday. Yeah, yesterday I got a new um, new application for the PC, uh, which is related to art. For um, quite some time now, I've had a, an application called Sculptress. It's free, available free of charge, and um, it's a 3D clay type sculpting application. It works quite nice. Uh, it's big brother is um, ZBrush. Quite a full, well it's a full 3D modelling package. Uh, at full 3D modelling package costs. And I've kind of always looked at it 
and got, I'd really like to have that when I win the lottery because it's something like six or seven hundred UK pounds for a license can't really justify well I can't, could but I don't really want didn't want to justify spending that amount of money just to play with it and if I was doing it commercially then yeah no problem but um, just to play with and do sort of some 3D modelling uh, so freehand type 3D modelling as opposed to um, use another tool which I can't remember now what it's called but is is more geometric drawing type 3D modelling and um, ZBrush and um, Sculptress are kind of free form like you've got clay on your desk and you're modelling using clay you know pulling bits off putting bits on scraping lines these sorts of things um, to a more interactive 3D modelling and yeah, so again, one of the things that, so, uh, yeah, uh, he says, thinking about what I was trying to say, what I was trying to say is sort of, so I haven't really taken a lot of notice uh, about uh, about ZBrush because yeah, too expensive, and for no particular reason, I think on Friday it was. I can't actually remember. Oh yes, I got an email about Sculptress, and I thought, oh well, the, you know, over the weekend I'll check. I'll check. I've got the latest version. Um, although they haven't updated it in quite a number of years, um, they actually bought it, and so somebody developed it, uh, and then the ZBrush people bought them and bought the. Uh, bought Sculptress, which they continue to make available, but they never actually sort of enhanced it. In fact, what they've done is taken some of the features and put some of the features into ZBrush. Well, uh, what I discovered on Friday was that ZBrush have actually, some time ago now, released something called ZBrush Core, which is what it might sound like, I guess, the core of ZBrush. So it's a number of sort of the, in quotes, essential tools, I suppose, um, with you know a, quite a large amount of the capability of ZBrush itself. But you know, instead of having hundreds of tools, it's got like sixty and things like that, which is sort of fair enough. But the price is somewhat better. I think something like 140 US dollars, which makes it sort of a lot more affordable. And so that's what I did this weekend. I went and um, went and bought ZBrush Core, and uh, I've yet to play with it much, but well, much more than about five minutes. But as soon as I installed it, one of the things I was able to to do is doodle with it and just sort of doing a face with ears couple of eyes and I don't mean anything fancy I mean literally a smiley face type thing um, with the you know, ears and uh, I was kind of able to do that with you know as soon as I picked up the mouse <laughs> in one case um, although the the pen in, in another on the other computer and it is really nice because they let you install it on two computers, providing you only use it on one at a time. But um, yeah, I sort of with Sculptress, it sort of took quite a bit of time, even with practice, to sort of do that same sort of smiley face. Whereas uh, with ZBrush, it was kind of really easy to do. So I'm kind of looking forward to playing with it at some point when I get some more time which may or may not be for a long time uh, if I get the well when I get the glass studio up and running that's coming soon TM <laughs> um, in the next well should be within the next few weeks kind of looking to order the kit next week 
then delivery will be when it's delivered which I expect to be within a, within a week assuming all the parts are in stock so uh, not this time next week but in a week this time in the fortnight I may well be blowing glass, not blowing it maybe, moulding, melting glass. So the stream could be glass work. And if you want to see some of the uh, trial glass work that I did, I did a one day course. Um, well, I didn't do, I did a half day course, a three hour course, uh, in order to determine if I liked glass blowing, glass work, flame work. Ten minutes after starting, I knew I did. Um, after the three hour training, I then had five hours torch time just playing with the glass and uh, you know continued to enjoy doing it and so during that time I made quite a few objects and uh, I don't think they were bad for the, for the fact that they were you know never done them before done for the first time ever you know some of the things like the vortex marble isn't very round it rolls but it's not very round and I forgot to I forgot the vortex bit <laughs> I forgot to twist it, um, but you know, first time ever. I actually, even did some glass blowing. If you'd like to see, take a look at what I actually did, then the pictures are on Facebook. Um, Facebook.com/slash Aragon Art, of course, and uh, you can take a look at the album there, or the latest um, update, latest post at the time of speaking that is that uh, contains the uh, the pictures of the the glass work that I did This bit of wood is really reluctant to take colour. No, oh, the pen's heating. Which I knew, but there's no apparent issues with it. What you can do with the machine is take a look at the LED indicator. That's, it's it's across the output of the yeah, to the pen. Um, but if there's um, if if the pen's not working, like if I unplug it, then the LED lights brightly. And um, if I plug the pen in, then it let it lights more dimly. Uh, like when I first started the. Uh, the stream this evening the uh, the light was flashing which kind of indicates sort of an inter intermittent connection I don't mean flashing as in a regular flash but sort of like you know interference type flashing
Now then, uh, as it happens on this part of the hill, because this is on a slope as you can sort of maybe gather, um, this tends to get cut with a strimmer, which then leaves sort of a line of grass across. So if I do get any working lines like that, then um, I'm expecting it to sort of look a bit like a strimmer cut. And have less of a less of an impact, which is partly why I'm sort of going in that sort of direction uh, in terms of doing not necessarily doing exact rows, but doing stuff. Is it here in the studio tonight? 27 degrees. And it feels warmer than it has done before when it's been at 29. That's the humidity for you. It's substantially more humid today, this evening. Partly on account of the fact it's just been raining. this bit of the wood isn't taking colour very much easily and I'm slowing down to do it. I could turn the heat up which would be a similar sort of thing Yeah, I could then continue to work faster and if I I guess if I had a significantly large area that might be something that I'd want to do but the outside areas from this uh, are taking colour normally and so I'd have to work even faster I don't actually know how big or small the area is, I've got a feeling it's all the way around here because I can sort of see a white area But by going slower, I, I can see, as I'm doing it, if the colour's taking faster, and therefore I can sort of deal with it. Uh, if I was having to work faster because of this, because I turned the heat up, and I came to a, a bit which took the colour really easily, um, it would be too dark before I realised I needed it to be quicker. Now I might be able to dis disguise that without a problem but I kind of like avoiding that problem to start with.
you can physically feel the difference in wood. The area up here is a lot harder. The knife doesn't actually cut into it as much. So you do kind of get a, a warning. That something's different. Right, well we're getting closer. Closer and closer. I think that's an Alice in Wonderland sort of misparaphrase, but Well, this bit is hard. I think I will use a little bit more heat. Hmm, you bit of wood just there around here are going to be hard work. Time for a bit more tea.
Sorry I'm not saying a great deal, but there's not a great deal to say about lots of lots of lots of grass. I've kind of decided I'm probably not going to do another background on here. I'm just going to do the grass, uh, which is a background, of course, uh, and grounds the shed, gives the shed something to stand on rather than it being floating in midair. Which in itself is not too bad a thing. I mean, as a as a picture, it's missing some of the interest around there. I don't know whether I will actually maybe tone the colour down a little bit. It might be something I'll do even though I won't put a background in. Because it's bright white at the moment. Tone it down it will look a little bit better. So I just knock the white edge off. But largely speaking, much of it is now done. You may look at some of the colours again, go over the top. Once this is in place, and perhaps once I've done a, a uh, an out, not an outline, but a sort of a general sort of grey background. Because that could sort of throw some of the colour look you know some of the colour values out. Because you're always comparing things to the well colours to the colours that are around the thing you're looking at. It's one of the ways in which you can tell what a colour is, even when you can't see it. Um, and by which I mean that, uh, I mean, for example, there's plenty of experiments being done by where you take a, a coloured object and you light it in a certain way and, you know, let's say you put a red light on a green object and you can still tell it's green. And at other times you put that same red light on the same green object and it looks black, which is what it should look. And uh, it's kind of... If there's something else in the scene, then you judge colours relative to other colours. So, you know, something that's green like that, which should look black, you can tell is green because, and it looks green because of comparison to something else with it. Bit of an optical illusion, that. And quite often you see optical illusions where they'll sort of say, is this square the same colour as that square? Um, or even same grey level. And you know this one will be covered with sort of fairly light squares around it. Some have fairly dark squares around it, and you look at it and go, "That's lighter than that." And yet they're identical colours, identical values. If you isolate them by putting a sheet of paper with holes cut in it over the top, you can see they look absolutely identical in colour and shade. But as soon as you look at things around it, it changes, and that sort of optical illusion is what is what happens when you've got a white area around the board for example. All of these stuff around here looks dark. If I darken that down they'll look less dark. Which is kind of weird because you don't go oh that's dark. You go no oh, that's all right and they're less dark. You kind of that's the biggest area or the background which you kind of expect to set the general light tone I guess and everything is relative to it. That's how your brain sort of works bit of a weird thing but yeah you can visibly with something sometimes it, you colour around it and the, the stuff you're not colouring visibly changes shades now it doesn't it can't it's impossible but as you're looking at it it gets you know lighter or darker depending on what I'm doing but it literally fig not literally I said uh, or even figuratively but it's you know um, you're looking at it and you see it change colour. It's not. And you, you know, you can know it's not, but it looks different. And it's that comparison to stuff that's around it, which is what's giving it an apparent change.
you know I'm gonna finish this bit I am determined to finish this bit And we're getting closer. <laughs> we haven't finished this bit. I'm stopping.
Nearly there, nearly there, nearly there. It's a really hard piece of wood, and hard pieces of wood are, are, you know, usually don't take colour fantastically well. Kind of understandable, they've got less moisture in them. But they can be a little bit of a pig to colour sometimes, because they take the colour really slowly, because there's not a lot of liquid there to heat up on yeah, change. But it can get kind of frustrating. So it's not you, it's the wood. <sighs> to paraphrase a um, fairly famous saying, I guess. Not going across the bottom there because that grass is in front of this grass here. And the end is in sight. Which of course is a completely silly statement because I'm looking at it, you know what I mean? But turn this back down just to do this bit here because this bit of wood here is, is softer and at the heat I was just using this will go really dark finishing time anyway but that's a bit of a uh, exercise my hands exercise my eyes that's a bit of a, a um, bit of a task is that one uh, uh, I have got some uh, you can see some markings across there let's see if we can do a little bit about that my fingers are a little bit numb from all the tapping interesting this isn't fantastically visible I can see it but it's not fantastically visible here
Okay, so that line's sort of gone there. And if I darken some of this area here. We start to disguise some of it. This is kind of what I'm doing real time. Uh, Televideo pyrography or telepyrography I guess because I'm not looking at the pen well I am but I'm looking at it on my monitor over there I need to do something probably around here And he's cleaning. And this area around here. This bit of hard wood. Do a bit more work on that. Um, I think uh, it's not too bad. It kind of looks like grass cut lines now, which is all right, I guess. But we'll see how that goes, and possibly we'll come back to it again uh, once the rest of the grass is done. But for now, that's going to be it. Um, next stream. If you would like to see some more of this, next stream will be on Wednesday, 7pm UK time, that's 1800 hours GMT. If you'd like to see some of these, uh, some of the early bits of this, some of the bit more or less boring stuff than putting lots of lots of grass blades, um, two or three are available here on Twitch, but the rest, if you'd like to see them, are available on YouTube, youtube.com slash so take a look there for any of the earlier videos, including any of anything like about 600 previous broadcasts, about 800, well, no, there'll be about 500 previous broadcasts. Um, the whole history, basically. About eight to 900 hours of video, all in real time, recorded uh, from each broadcast. So if you'd like to see any of the earlier broadcasts, and some of them are interesting, when I wasn't quite so comfortable or familiar with talking to a camera but anyway with that I am going to say thank you for watching and if I should do some behind I might do some grass behind there I think it kind of looks too abrupt stopping it like that and there is some grass behind this so we'll come back to that um, with that thank you for watching hope I'll see you on Wednesday bye for now <laughs>